Most donors don't start out by giving major gifts. They may come in through direct mail, through an event, or as a volunteer. So when you think about the donor pipeline and how you're moving people from acquisition to major and planned gifts, you need to structure your processes to help make that a smooth journey for your donors. In this episode, Richard and I are sharing a donor journey health checklist that will help you understand whether your organization's structure is really aligned to the donor's experience and how you can improve that flow to seamlessly transition donors throughout their relationship with your organization. Welcome to the Nothing But Major Gifts podcast from Veritas Group, featuring Richard Perry and Jeff Schreifels. Twice a month, we bring you the latest and best thinking about major gift fundraising, so you can develop authentic relationships with your major donors. Here are your hosts, Richard and Jeff. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm Jeff Schreifels, and here today with Richard Perry. And today, we're looking at what makes up the donor journey. And we wanted to put together a checklist for all the different elements you need in place to have a healthy donor pipeline. So Richard, what do people need to know about the donor journey so that they can start to evaluate the health of their pipeline? Yeah, well, this this is this is such an interesting topic, yeah. Jeff. I mean, it's and, and actually, very few people are talking about it, and or even trying to understand it. Uh, and what I mean about the topic is is how how an organization structure and division of labor affects the donor journey and revenue. I mean, it seems like. Well, hold on. What do you hold? On. What so? What do you mean by that? Because I thought we were talking about donors and getting into the donor stuff. So it seems like. You're talking about structure, you're getting off of donor stuff. No, 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 not really. You see, what the donor experiences as as she journeys uh, in her relationship to the organization, and how, how she experiences the organization itself, Yeah, it actually affects how she thinks Okay, and how she feels about the organization. And then that, in turn, directly affects her giving. I mean, it just every single time. Okay, I get that. So how an organization treats its donors will determine whether they'll stay with the organization or give more. But let's drill down a little bit on this. So where does it start to go wrong? Well, uh, it really starts to go wrong when the staff, the leadership, and everybody has the wrong philosophy of giving. And you and I have talked about this yeah. a lot, where you know where you think the donor is simply just like a source of cash versus right. a true partner. right. Now, if that way of thinking sits in the organization, uh, it, it can't help but create a hostile environment for the donor. I mean, you remember the stories we've told about how, or I've told you about how, going to, into one organization where there was just a stack of, of envelopes or where all uh, from donors, in other words, yeah. gifts from donors, right. where all the checks right. had been deposited. This this stack of, 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 of information had come from donors a month prior, one yeah. month prior, <clears throat> but the, the checks had been taken out, but the donors had not been actually processed, thanked or anything. That kind of treatment, and and you you have other stories. I mean, we have, both have experiences. Mm -hmm. That kind of treatment sends a message to the donors that, well, the only thing you're good for is the money. Yeah. I feel like Nonprofits have some kind of story, maybe it's not that particular one, but another one where donors are just not respected. And, you know, the organization comes first and then it's all about the donor. I know it's it's just it's just not good. And and so that's why we have these huge attrition rates, value attrition yeah. rates. I mean, the nonprofit world compared to the commercial world is so so behind yeah in terms of yeah. customer retention because well, of treatment yeah and i mean that's why we're we here at veritas are constantly talking about this before we get into all the strategy and the messaging of mid major and planned gifts you must have your heart and your thinking right on this very point right because if you don't then the organization is going to suffer economically that's exactly right. And and so that's the first step. So the first step in the whole process of checking the donor okay. health index journey, I mean, all that stuff is checking to see 
that everyone in the organization, including including non-fundraising personnel, are thinking right about the money and thinking right about the donor. And then the second step is to analyze how the organization treats the donor through the various phases of fundraising, which, you know, in a very simple form are acquisition, cultivation, mid-level, major giving, and plan giving. Yeah. Okay. So why is this so important? Well, look at it this way, Jeff. If if the managers uh, of fundraising in the organization and all the staff, for that matter, are just focused on getting the money, then what's going to happen is they'll design strategies, tactics, processes, systems to do just that. Yeah. Strategies and tactics that, quite honestly, they bruise the donor. That's like biasing the messaging towards asks versus telling the donor he or she made a difference or right. ignoring that donor who by the frequency and amount of their giving is signaling a desire to give more involvement, but continues to be treated as a donor that's not interested in more involvement. So you, in other words, you could have a donor that really wants to give, but you're not doing anything to ask, to solicit the donor or, you, you know, like some... Like if you're looking in the direct response world, there are a lot of donors that want to give more, but you're only sending them one or two appeals a year to them. Yeah, when yeah. You could be sending so much more because they want to get involved or it's a major donor that's on your C list and you've just kind of put them to the side just yeah. because, well, they're not going to give more. They want to do more, but you've never actually tried to reach out to them to really get to know them. Yeah, Exactly. That's exactly what happens. And, and then, and you know, the result of this kind of behavior is that the donor feels used yeah. and abused, which is why he or she, they just give less and they even go away. Yeah. Uh, so strategies and tactics that are off point because the person designing the fundraising does not understand that the main thing here is the donor and his or her journey, not the money. Yeah. This is so interesting, Bridger, because there is so much we do in our planning and execution of those plans that has us totally forgetting this point. If we viewed everything we do to the donor through the eyes and experiences of the donor, we would affect how we do those things, right? Yeah. And that's that's the second big point, Jeff. So let me back up and summarize. Okay. So first... We're wanting to know that everybody in the organization, everyone is on the same page as to how to think about fundraising, the money and the donor. So that's kind of like point. the whole culture of philanthropy. You need to have a culture of philanthropy. Yeah, exactly. So that's the first point. And then secondly, we want to be sure that our strategies and tactics are donor supportive and sensitive so that when they are seen through the experiences of the donor, they're positive, construction, and helpful. Yeah. So then the third part of the work is in analyzing the donor journey is, do we have something to present to the donor who yeah. wants to help more? Exactly. I mean, yes. And this is the whole thing about donor offers. Yeah. How to package the organization's budget into meaningful, incredible projects and programs that a donor will and can support. And this is so important. Oh, it really is. How many times, Jeff, have we seen situations where a donor wants to help more, but that need and want is not is really not satisfied because the organization has not done the work to prepare something for the donor. No, see, most organizations are like, well, we just need operating funds. Uh, and so, you know, the donor just loves us. We don't need to talk about specifics because, you know, we don't want to have anything, uh, you know, where, where they are honed in on just one thing. So, what we do is we just say, hey, to these fundraisers, just go out and get money for the general operating. Oh, I know. Yeah. And so that might appeal to some donors, but if you're going to ask a donor to give large six, seven figure gifts, that's not going to cut it. And that's why we see in the data from many organizations that really haven't figured this out where you get a donor that's giving $5,000 every year or 10,000, even yeah, 25,000 yeah. every year, because that's what they do. They just give that one gift at that level because the organization is never challenged or asked the donor to do more, but they also don't have a specific project that matches the donor's passions and interests. 
I mean, it's just so basic. I mean, and this is why the, the organization needs to be ready to give the donor the options for greater involvement yeah. when the donor, when the donor signals that he or she is ready to do that. Yeah. So like you, you, you remember that the, I mean, we have just scores of these examples, but the donor yeah. that was giving 5,000 and then they were given uh, an offer that matched their donor their passions and interests and they gave 250,000 yeah. for the donor that was, that, that gave, it was giving a far less and gave nine million. Yeah, I mean it's like there are donors in your file as you're listening right now. Oh, there know. are donors in your file that want to do more, so you've got to they actually do. give them something to do, to and give to. Here's one that I've been dealing with a lot recently: is we have an organization that is expecting um, that the entire um, fundraising work all the way you know all the all the stuff from individuals they want to raise like 50 million dollars a year and they call it their operating fund or whatever right right okay and so they hired they brought us in you know they've noticed that their donors could give a lot more and they just haven't been you know they're loyal donors but they haven't been giving a lot they bring us in to help them put the structure together for the organization for mid and major gifts and plan giving so we've got this beautiful structure now in place. We're working with these major gift officers, but the problem is we don't have we don't have the offers. We don't have the big offers. Yeah. We still have the small five thousand, ten thousand, just general operating, and we've been saying you've got to be able to figure out all of your programs and projects under your full umbrella. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. fine. But what are they? And codify them and then put a dollar figure to them so yeah. that donors can start giving 25, 50, 100, 1 million dollars. Yes. And that's what it's going to take. And they haven't yet fully grasped this yet until the day that I'm going to have to finally speak into their leadership and say, look, if you want us to come in and help your fundraisers raise big, large gifts, you've got to empower them by putting together the offers. That are going to match the needs of those. Well, things. we've we've said it. We've said it over again. We've likened the situation to a, a company that has a retail store, and you go into the retail store, and there's nothing in there. Exactly. There's just empty shelves. Yeah. So, what do you expect the customer to do? Stay in there and be happy? They're not going to do it. And that's what happens with the donor. They go into the organization's retail store and find nothing. Yeah. It's it's pretty sad. Pretty sad. Uh, now there are two there are two more points in reviewing the donor uh, okay. journey here. One uh, is reviewing the amount of investment the organization makes in each phase of the donor journey. Yep. And the last one is constructing a vision for where we're going with the donor as we journey together. So let's let's briefly look at each of these. Okay. So on the investment side, you've got uh, and in uh, you've got investing in donor acquisition, which as you know is usually uh, in the first cycle. Yep. First phase, a loss, uh, a, a loss of. Uh, I mean, you you put a dollar. You lose out, you money the, at the point of acquisition. You lose money, right? And then in the next phase of cultivation, it's a you know you invest one, you get three to four. Mid level, it gets gets better. Major gets better, and so on. Well, all of that together needs to be balanced. It's a very delicate ecosystem, as you know. Yes. But how many organizations have we looked at? where the thing is out of balance. Yeah. Where too much money is spent on acquisition, not enough for mid and major, which is why mid and major is starving yeah. and not able to contribute a high net revenue to uh, the organization or the other way around. That's right. Yeah, we'll see some that are just focused on the upper end and nothing's coming up the pipeline, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're like, oh, we, we're, we got to really focus on that, that so that that pipeline is healthy because we're running out of donors in a sense, because nothing's coming up, but we all, and then on the other side, I mean, we've seen organizations who have spent millions and millions of dollars on new donor acquisition. They get these $10 donors or $10 a month donors, which is great, but then they have nothing, nowhere for them to go. No mid-level, no major gift program. So they're always churning and burning these donors, I not know. looking it, at how do we bring them along in their journey? You know, it's just like they're stuck at giving that small gift. 
and all that money they invested in acquisition is wasted. So uh, we've seen two two types of situations in this uh, in this situation where no money is put into or very little money is put into acquisition because the leaders and managers think that uh, major go mid and major donors are just going to pop out of the ether somewhere. Right. Right. Or, or the reverse. <laughs> the other the other one is in the middle. There's a lot of organizations that don't have a mid-level program. So they got the acquisition cultivation thing over here. They get, they've got major gifts plan giving over here. They never talk, you know, and then major gifts is like, you know, we need more major donors <laughs> and they're sitting there in the cultivation side. Exactly. No one's doing anything yep. to kind of move them up and starting introducing yep. them to a relationship. And so that's another area where many organizations are not bridging that divide between the direct response program and the major gift program. And this is where structure and the vision of labor and authority gets gets everybody in trouble because you've got strong managers who care about their silo, yes. their phase, and, and, and they're all pitching their budget and so on. And there's not enough strength and oversight to look at the entire thing as a whole. It's yeah. a delicate ecosystem that needs it, to be balanced yeah. and managed. Yes. So that's the whole investment thing. Now, the last one is asking if the organization has a vision for the future of each donor. Yeah. And what this means is that someone in the organization is watching the donor's behavior in the journey and is equipped by the organization to respond to that donor as they travel with the organization. So, for instance, yeah. if, a, if a donor is expressing interest in program X, the organization pivots to providing donor with program X information so that the organization can help that donor be involved more. Yes. Or if the donor wants kind of a certain involvement with the organization, as best as it can, it provides that involvement, et cetera, et cetera. So all this sort of sensitive treatment of the donor, because we are now aware of the donor's needs, yeah. it just means more revenue, which in turn affects our forecasts for the future. Uh, I mean, it's just, this is just basic stuff. Instead of just like, oh, we'll just do a forecast. Well, if we know the donor and we, we can actually understand what's going on with the donor, our forecasts are even going to be better. I mean, they are. So Richard, this is powerful stuff. And I can see that helping an organization look at how they are doing all of this, looking at it through the donor's eyes and experiences can help the organization become much more helpful, caring, mm -hmm. and tuned into the donor and their journey. So this is good stuff. So just before we close, let's. why don't you go over the main points again? All right. So there's five of them. Number one is a look at the philosophy, the fundraising. So is there a culture of philanthropy? Yeah. Are we focused on the donor? Secondly is do the strategies and tactics support the current, uh, do the current strategies and tactics to support the donor journey. Yeah. Thirdly, do we have something to present to the donor if they want to help more? That's that whole donor often thing. Yeah. Fourth, is there a balanced and productive and effective investment in each phase mm -hmm. of the donor journey? Yeah. So acquisition, cultivation, mid-major, planned, so on. And then lastly is constructing kind of a future vision for the donor, which then affects our revenue and our forecasting. That's that's the work that we are are doing in terms of measuring the health. In other words, is the health of the donor through your organization? Yeah. Uh, is it is it? I mean, is is that journey healthy or is it not? Because if it's not, then you're not going to be developing the level of revenue and donor retention and value retention that you should. Yeah. yeah. So that's the point. Yeah. And you can do this. You, you've done this yourself, Richard. You can go into an organization and look at all these stages, right? Yep. And determine if it's healthy, where there's areas of opportunity, how they should be investing, right? talking to the people, internal people, and finding out you know, just how well they're set up for the donor to move as easy as possible yes. through that pipeline and their yes. journey up to major gifts. And, and that's the whole point. It's not to mm -hmm. mess around with the organization and get political. It's about yeah. creating an environment that's safe, that's uh, effective, that's warm, inviting, and comfortable for the donor, which in turn helps the organization financially. Yeah. 
Well, thank you all for joining us today for this episode, and I hope that you get some valuable takeaways that will help you to better support your donors at different stages of their journey. And if you'd like to learn more about how to improve what you do inside your organization that mm -hmm. results in a more positive donor journey and more net revenue for your program, then I encourage you to reach out to us to inquire about our organizational development services that we just talked about. You can get that process started by reaching out to my colleague, Amy Chapman at Amy A. Chapman at VeritasGroup.com or by starting our free donor file assessment process because that's part of that donor development yep, services yes, is yes. looking at the donor file assessment first, which is really that first step in uncovering those opportunities for improvement. And you can find these links in the show notes or on our website. So take care and we'll see you next time. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Nothing But Major Gifts podcast from Veritas Group. Richard and Jeff also write an ongoing blog that you can subscribe to for free at veritasgroup.com. Please join us again next time.